Howdy all of you delicious people, I'm here today to review Duel. So this is a 2022 film and gotta say, uh, it's been such a long time since I've gone into a movie and felt so awkwarded by the film or felt like a movie was so bizarre. <laughs> there was so much stuff that they couldn't have been bothered to explain in this movie, uh, but also like there are these moments in this movie that I'm just like, okay, like they had an interesting concept, but what they turn around and did with it, uh, like, I'm just like, should I be laughing here? Like, is this just the, like the driest sense of humor kind of movie? Uh, like I just felt so baffled by this film for the directions they were heading. Like there were some interesting things in here uh, and there were possibly some funny moments, but, like, I just felt so, like, weirded out by this film that I don't know if I could really go on and, like, give this a positive thumbs up kind of review. I just can't. Um, kind of surprised that I guess this is going into theaters right now. I would immediately have thought, like, this would have been, like, quickly going into some, like, app somewhere. Um, no offense, it just doesn't feel like that kind of, like, theater quality movie. It feels like you just going and sliding right into an app, uh, kind of quality, uh, for a film. I just, I don't know, like, this movie was just so odd. Uh, so let's go into it, let's tee it up, and, uh, let's also, uh, go on and say, uh, where you can see this movie, if not in theaters, supposedly uh <laughs> i'm gonna go on and tell you where to go to see this movie in a bootleg version it may not be the cleanest it may not be the most perfect but you can watch the movie regardless so at the end of the day you could see this movie on let her see movies app uh darren fact google search this and be able to find an app you can hopefully download and be able to see whatever you like premium access stuff uh Stuff that would normally be on a app exclusively, you can see through C Movies. You can also go on and find an app called Fox HD Movies, regardless of what I say next. Just search for those words, and then also like have it be an app. So, because uh, the logo will say Fox HD Movies, but the title will say something different. It'll probably say like Play 1080p HD Movies. Um, and you can also go on to a, a Google play store search and uh search the word uh tv crush where at some point you may go on and maybe not find duel but you might be able to go on and find other movies uh that eventually you'll be able to see for absolutely free so with that said duel teeing it up what is this movie about so it seems that sarah is to go on and have a life where it doesn't seem like she's really connected uh, with her boyfriend or with her mother or uh, it seems like she's always alone. And so Sarah one day is to kind of be sleeping and she ends up coughing up blood. She goes to the hospital and the hospital is to go on and tell her that she is to have this this illness that she that is an uncurable illness that she will die soon. So Sarah is to be told by these doctor by this doctor that there is this like replacement uh, procedure for Sarah basically to get cloned here. So when Sarah is to go on and die, uh, another Sarah can go on and take her place to help uh kind of grieve or kind of like grieve through the process of losing a loved one by still having them technically there so sarah's to go on and decide to do this replacement procedure and like we start the movie off by having uh, another man called robert michaels who is to go on and had done the same 
uh, thing of replacement, but all of a sudden my, Robert is to find out that he was to survive his illness. And so come to find out, at some point we have Sarah doing the same thing, and she is to survive her illness. But then after that, we have both the original and the replacement having to fight to the death. Because it seems like there is some, uh, there is something where there can only be one real Sarah in existence. Because you can't go on and just have two different versions of the same person just kind of walking around. So... And also there's like a part where Sarah can go on and discontinue her replacement. But then all of a sudden, like, that all that that is like taken off the table for whatever reason. And so now there is this fight to the death scenario going on. And now Sarah has to forcibly fight her double, her doppelganger, to the death. And so Sarah now has to take a year to plan for this and get healthy and like all of this stuff and it seems that she's to do this all alone because we have it of course where like her friends and family are all to love this replacement and the original sarah is just kind of going on and like spending time with her trainer and like that's like that's the bulk of the rest of the film and like Trent is to train Sarah on all these like absurd like, hey, go on and see this horror movie that's horrible, um, but it has really good kills in it. Or that Sarah ha is have to go on and see pictures of certain people who had gotten killed in previous uh, scenarios. And oddly uh like so we go on and we just have these weird bizarreish imagery imagery in this film that i'm just like what's going on here <laughs> what is like what is this film uh so yeah at the end of the day uh, i think it's time to just say let's go into spoilers let's talk about this movie a little bit more because it's about that time for us to level five this up i think it's about time to just really just go into spoilers this is gonna be a weird movie to describe because otherwise there, it, it kind of feels like this movie is also very flat, too. There's just, like... Ah, this movie. It's so, like... I was so baffled by this film. I'm like, how am I going to go on and talk about this one? This is just so weird. So, let's go into spoiler time. Spoiler time. It's about the time we can do spoil. F duel. So, beginning of this movie, Sarah is to go off to this Mexican food place... And so Sarah is to go on and make her way home where she is to start uh, like thumbing through the internet to look at adult videos to maybe uh, go and be very uh, touchy feely upon herself. And all of a sudden we have her uh, boyfriend slash husband, not quite sure which that is, Peter, who is to uh, kind of Skype Sarah and Sarah kind of picks up the, the the laptop to go on and talk with Peter. So Sarah's talking with Peter and Peter is to go on and we never really see what Sarah does for her job. So like there's stuff that just doesn't like add up here where like Sarah is to be running out of like expenses for all the stuff that she has to go on and do of like well what is the job that she does anyways pushing on so Sarah's to ask uh peter how things are going and peter is mentioning about him having to uh do some like job things that are to have to award uh certain guys for the good work that they do and at one point, like, Peter is to cut off, and so Sarah doesn't really correct him, because it just kind of feels like both of these characters are, like, just kind of going through the motions. And oftentimes, we just have it to where they have brief conversations, 
And then Sarah is to just say, it's like, oh, well, I'm tired. Like, I think I should probably go to sleep now. Or like Peter is to say the same thing. It's like, well, hey, I'm just going to go straight to sleep. Uh, because really, like, like there's nothing for them to go on and say to one another. It's, it's sad. So <clears throat> Sarah is to go to bed after probably uh, giving herself uh, some, mu some much needed uh, touch in feeling the fabric of our lives and so sarah goes on <laughs> it's weird this movie is sarah goes on to then uh then go to sleep and she dreams about her and her mother at this restaurant and sarah's going on and consistently like eating because like she's hungry but her mother is just like well like, what, are you not talking to me? Or are you just trying to shove things in your mouth so you don't have to talk to me? And so it gets to the point where Sarah's mother is, like, putting a cup to Sarah's mouth to just have her spit out the food. And so Sarah spits out the food. And then Sarah's mother is to bring up that, like, that Sarah used to have this penny collection. And... So all of a sudden, Sarah is to open up this penny collection, and then she just starts eating these pennies. And I'm like, what? <laughs> she just starts eating the pennies. And then all of a sudden, she starts, like, plah, like, plowing them all out. And you just see, like, all these pennies. I'm serious. This is the film. Um, all these pennies just coming out of this girl's mouth. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? And so all of a sudden we see Sarah is waking up and like blood is coming out of her mouth. And so Sarah is to wake up and she is to like go on and like put all of her sheets into this like washer and dryer. I'm like, how are you going to be able to clean that out? So Sarah is to go on to the doctors and the doctor is to ask her, it's like, well, hey, like. Do you think that this is an emergency or not an emergency? And all of a sudden, Sarah is to wah, <laughs> out some blood. And they're like, whoa, like, okay. And Sarah's like, well, like, I don't think it's a real emergency. And I'm like, what? Like, this girl's yakking up some blood. She's probably going to die soon. So Sarah goes to the doctor. And they just, like, they're just running some tests and then they don't go on and they give her any results. They don't tell her what's wrong with her. They just kind of ship her out. And they're just like, well, hey, like, we can't, like, we can't discuss, like, any of the, 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 the things that's wrong with you right now. So, like, we just did a bunch of tests and you can just go on home. And so Sarah all of a sudden is to just, like is to like go home but they're saying it's like well hey like i think what you need to do is just like you need a much needed rest and just kind of like stay home and just kind of rest it up so sarah is to go on and so the very next day she doesn't have any episodes again like sarah even goes to the gym and is to work out and so all of a sudden sarah is to go and have this uh, video talk with Peter and Sarah is to basically do this in her like sports bra and her like her undies and so Sarah is going on and saying that she went to the gym and she's all sweaty and like now she's just kind of wearing this these clothes and I'm like dang freaking Karen like looking great <laughs> just really i'm not saying that as a joking thing just looking superb so peter is to go on and break the news to sarah that sarah is to have this terminal illness or this terminal thing about her that is going to have her die because peter was to have had this voicemail from this doctor because I guess there was like a switch 
uh, in her information and they got his phone. And so it seems that Peter was to find out that Sarah was going to die and he didn't know how to break it to her. And Sarah's like, what? And he's like, yeah. Like, and so Sarah asked Peter, it's like, well, how long have you known about this? And he's like, I've known about it for two days now. Okay. So Sarah's to go back to the doctors and they don't actually tell her like what's wrong with her. They just say that like, oh yeah, you have this uncurable illness that there is like a 98% chance that you're going to die. And Sarah's like, well, like, so there is a chance that I might live. And they're like, well, yeah, but it's only 2%. It's like, yeah, what do you think 98% is? Really? Wow. Uh, so Sarah is to go on and they immediately have options for her about her dying. And like, well, hey, like you can go on and you can like get buried or like you could also get cremated like and we have the doctor who's like mentioning how, like what she prefers if she dies that she wants to get like buried because then people would be obligated to have to go on and see her uh, and make their way to like get to her uh, through holidays and whatever. And I'm like, this movie is so bizarre. <laughs> This is so bizarre. And I'm sorry that my voice cracked there, but it's like, bah! And so we have this doctor that's like, well, but you can also get cremated. You can like toss your ashes all over the sea or, or whatever. But again, like I would much rather get buried. <laughs> and I'm like, what about this? This doctor is like thinking about her own mortality. And so Sarah's like, well, like, I think I might want to get like cremated and so, but the doctor is to also mention to Sarah that there is a procedure called replacement uh, for her to get cloned. And when Sarah dies, this replacement can live on and like help people like transition uh, from losing Sarah to have Sarah tech, another Sarah technically in the, her life. So... In my brain, if it was like, well, like, if I was to be cloned, wouldn't the other clone be dying also? That di that didn't quite make sense to me. Um, like, but also this episode kind of feels like something weirdly from Outer Limits uh, or like uh, Twilight Zone. Anyways, pushing on. So Claire, or Claire, uh, Sarah is to decide to go on and do the replacement like procedure and so the guys go on and they say oh yeah like all you need to do is just kind of spit in this cup and so she does and they say like yeah the cloning process will just take an hour and i'm like okay so sarah goes on and is to meet her clone and it seems that the other, the, the double Sarah is to be wearing these clothes. And so we go on and we have Sarah who, who likes, or double Sarah who likes Sarah's shirt. And so we go home and we have Sarah, who, or, or we have double Sarah that's asking Sarah, like, well, hey, like what, what? music do you like uh what kind of food do you like i'm like shouldn't this person know this <laughs> so this person just looks like sarah but knows nothing about her whatsoever how bizarre is that <laughs> that doesn't make any sense so sarah is to try on or double sarah is to try on sarah's clothes and so double Sarah is to say to Sarah, it's like, you know what? I think I might be like a little bit slimmer than you. And like, I don't think that this top works for me. Like when we go on uh, and you buy me new clothes, like I think you need to go on and like buy me something completely different. And I'm just like, oh my God. 
these two should be one and the same person, but all of a sudden, like, we just have it where, like, this double Sarah is to be very demanding, and if I were Sarah, it's like, dude, I'm gonna be dying soon. I'm gonna die. What the f should I care? <laughs> Why should you care, double Sarah? So, all of a sudden, we go on and we have double Sarah that is uh, to, of course, be spending time with Peter, and all of a sudden, Peter likes double Sarah more than regular Sarah, and all of a sudden... We have Sarah that is to also at some point go on and meet uh, Sarah's mother. And while that's happening, we have Sarah who goes to the doctor and they end up telling her, it's like, well, hey, like, I hate to break this to you, but it seems like you're going to live. Because... <laughs> This girl had skin the cat, I guess. That that's a horrible metaphor, but still, uh, scale the scale the whatever. And Sarah is to now live. She's in remission from whatever illness she has. Remission upon her. But it's like, well, remission probably means that she's still going to die at some point. Maybe there's always that inkling of possible death, but like. We go on, and so Sarah is to now see that double Sarah and Peter and Sarah's mom are all together in this place. And Sarah never broke it to her mother that she was going to die soon because replacement. So Sarah goes on and meets with all three of these people at this place and... Come to find out double Sarah was to tell Sarah's mother that Sarah was going to die. Like, she told her everything. And Sarah's like, well, I was waiting. I was wanting to wait to tell my own mother. And double Sarah's like, well, like, I already, like, I already stepped in and told her everything. Because I, like, I'm, I tend to go on and, like, I've been, like, reaching out to, uh, to your mother. So... While Sarah was talking to her doctor, she was saying, it's like, well, like replacements are only for dead people. And so you should just go on and decommission your, your replacement and kind of send them back. And so Sarah, when she was going on and like seeing that her double is living a better life than like she is, Sarah's like, well, like I'm going to decommission you. <laughs> You're going to die. Uh, so Peter all of a sudden pulls Sarah aside and is telling Sarah here. It's like, hey, like, I don't know what it is, but like me and double Sarah. Like, I love her like I love her better than you. And that. No matter what you do to her, if you decommission her, like, I will still never love you like I did her. And so, really, if this doesn't work out and you decommission her, like, we're done. So, now we have it where Sarah is just like, this woman is, like, taking my whole freaking life. And now I'm not gonna die. So, Sarah is to go on and legally see what she can do uh, to decommission her, her double and get rid of her. And come to find out, Sarah is to go to this lawyer. And this lawyer is like, well, it seems like your double had decided to go on and like, uh, like she has rights too. And she can no longer now be decommissioned. And now both of you have to go on and fight to the death one year from now. And, like, your double knows about this and you do. So, like, you guys are just going to have to hash. You guys are just going to fight it out within one year's time. Make sure that you're going to go on and find this, like, combat trainer uh, to be able to, like, fight, uh, fight well. And so 
Sarah's to go on. And Sarah is to now find Aaron Paul, who a lot of people will probably know from uh, Breaking Bad. And he's Trent here. And so Sarah goes and is to meet up with Trent. And Trent is like, well, I'm going to ask you right now. Like, do you really want to go on and fight for your life? Like, because you were about to die before. Like, so do you really want to go on? And, like, fight for your life. Because if you don't right now, like, we can kind of wash this all away. And you can go on for the next year and drink and booze and, and do whatever you want. And and then die afterwards. And Sarah was like, well, no. Like, I really want to, like, I really want to fight for my life. And Trent was like, well, okay then. So... Sarah and Trent, we never really see them actually much train for anything. Like, it seems like Trent is to kind of lay out, like, what their, like, the procedure of it. And, like, the number of weapons that are there and all of this stuff. But really just Trent tells Sarah to, like, watch these, like, this really weird, uh like someone to die for kind of movies and like Trent is to mention that they're garbage, but there's certain visuals that Sarah needs to get used to seeing. And so Trent is to show Sarah like numerous dead bodies that have died through arrows or poisoning, which doesn't make sense because that's not a part of the, the thing. Um, and so like, as if it's some pop quiz where Sarah has to go on and answer like, oh, this is dismemberment. Oh, this is an axe to the head. Oh, this is this. This is that. And Trent is to lay out all the weapons on this table. And, like, so that way Sarah can can realize these are all the weapons that she's going to have to use. And I'm like, man, this battle, like, that they're going to do, like, between these two clone persons. Like, man, this battle better be some kind of amazing and yeah, uh, really is. So Sarah goes on and so Trent is to tell Sarah, it's like, well, hey, like I'm going to train you like how to like be like in shape, but Sarah, you're going to need to like do the rest of that on your own time. Cause I'm going to train you other things. I'm going to have you, uh, do combat training. So Sarah goes on and does this like hip hop dance class. And so Trent and Sarah, like Sarah is starting to realize that like the fees for everything are getting ridiculously expensive for all this. And Sarah's like, well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to like, to like Trent, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pay you every single like month or whatever. And Trent is like, well, it seems like, uh, we can go on and do something that's both like uh, like significant that is to help out both of us and, and be some other arrangement. And so Sarah goes on and is to get consistent uh, supposed combat training. And Trent is to tell Sarah that he's going to set something up for her. But he's not quite sure like exactly... Um, at what like time or whatever this is going to be, but Sarah's going to have to go to, to see this also. So Sarah goes to this mortician to see this dead body being autopsied. And weirdly the person that's being autopsied on like kind of uh, cut open here is to be a woman that looks just like Sarah. And so Sarah is to have to go on and see this woman like pulling organs out and i'm just like you've gotta be like kidding me this is so bizarre so we go on and after this like we're not we don't actually see all the organs getting pulled out we don't see like all the stuff uh and whatever we just see sarah who's just kind of like going on so sarah is to watch the movies that trent wants her to watch and Sarah's like, well, yeah, this movie is garbage, but
but like I can see like why you wanted me to see some of these visuals. Because in one of the movies, we have one guy who is to go on and he ends up putting his hand into the sink because there's this uh, wedding ring in there. And so his wife is to have this wedding ring in the sink that drops. And so it's in the garbage disposal. So all of a sudden, this guy is trying to get this wedding ring out. And all of a sudden, his wife comes out of nowhere with this knife. And she's like, ah, and he's like, oh, no. And then all of a sudden, his wife is to hit the switch of the garbage disposal. And this guy's hand is now like kibbles and bits. And like blood is just flying everywhere. And that's just one of the scenes that I'm like, this is so weird. This is so capital W weird. So just the weirdness getting down with the weirdness anyways pushing on so sarah sarah after all this is like getting like prepared and so we have one moment where like trent was to say before it's like well we're gonna have to work uh and do something mutually beneficial and to pay for your fee and so come to find out sarah is to go on and teach trent how to do a hip-hop class and that's what she does for like the fee for that month and trent is like well like yeah now you've given me the confidence to want to go on and start a uh start doing a hip-hop class for beginners and Sarah's like, well, it's great that I got uh, to motivate you to go on and, and do one of those classes. So Trent is to now tell Sarah that there's one thing that tr that Sarah has to do. And Trent brings a dog in and is to give her a crossbow. And so Trent is to mention that his dog is very old and very sick and very, like, in pain. And so now Sarah is going to have to go on and use the crossbow on the dog. And Sarah's like, well, I'm sorry, but I don't think I can do that. And Trent's like, well, I can understand. But then all of a sudden, Sarah is to shoot this crossbow out this window. And Trent's like, what are you doing? And Sarah runs off and is to realize that her double is outside. And instead of having Sarah hit double Sarah, she accidentally hits some dog outside. And I'm like, oh my god, this movie just, like, really? Wow. So, Sarah starts chasing after her double, and we then go on and have her double at some, like, playground somewhere. And now all these tw now these two twins are to see Sarah and be like, hey, like, so you must be like that sister of that other girl. Like, we're sisters, too, and we're just alike. So these twin sisters take Sarah to double Sarah. And so the twin sister is to go on and have this dialogue that is talking about... Uh, about something happening to her sister where there was a guy asking about a toy for them to see. And the one sister didn't go on with her sister to see this toy and the guy kidnapped her and he hadn't seen, she hadn't seen her sister for a number of days, but eventually she came back to them. So, all of a sudden we have the twin sister's mom who comes back and it's now want her kids like away from the scene. So, Sarah's talking to, to double Sarah and is convincing her like, hey, like how about we go on and talk to one another? And Double Sarah's like, well, you were trying to kill me. And Sarah's like, well, yeah, I get that. But, like, 
like it was just a knee jerk reaction. Like, I'm sorry. Like, it'll never happen again. Uh, so Sarah and Double Sarah are talking to one another and talking things out. Like, Double Sarah is mentioning how like her life is going and how like social media is is such a like uh, such a horrible thing and like and all these other things where like she's talking about like Sarah's mother or she's talking about Peter and like so. Like, we have this girl's life that is such a horrible thing now. So, and we also have Double Sarah, who I guess was to never figure out how to drive. And so, Double Sarah is asking Sarah, they're like, well, how, like, like, how are you driving? And she has, like, no clue. So, I'm like, man, this is, like, the worst clone <laughs> that I've ever seen in my life uh, like, she doesn't even know, like, what really driving is. It's like, oh, you, you turn the wheel to one side and you turn the wheel to the other. And, like, the, the, there's a, there's a brake, there's pedals down there. I'm like, okay. So, we get where Sarah and Double Sarah, before they go off to this battle of the death, um, or battle to the death thing, they decide that they're going to go and hike beforehand. And so both of them go hiking. And Sarah and Double Sarah, like, are saying, like, well, yeah, I guess we should go and check one another's backpacks. Uh, and just kind of see, like, if either one of us has weapons and, and this and that. And, like, well, I don't. But, hey, you can, like, we can both check if we want to just kind of, just kind of be safe. So... Sarah, or Double Sarah is to hand Sarah this thing of water. And so Double Sarah is to drink out of this water as Sarah does. And then Double Sarah is like, well, how about we just take a big, huge gulp of water to just make sure that we're just hydrated? <laughs> and so it's like, okay, all right. So both of them start hiking. And so Sarah is talking to Double Sarah. It's like, well, yeah, like... We would have been exhausted by, like, this point. And it's so good that we've gone on and really started exercising because now we're in really good shape. All of a sudden, we have Sarah, who's, like, for, like, a little, like, thing of blood is starting to run down her mouth. And I'm like, oh, my God, is she starting to get sick again? Nothing is explained. So we have to naturally assume that Sarah had probably gotten poisoned. Because the next thing that we end up seeing is them talking about possibly that one of them or both of them may not show up to this, uh, this contest. And that you can't go on and get plastic surgery to look different than your other because like that would have like red flags go up. And, like, no one can go on and be able to do that. And I'm just, like, oakley doakley. But also, you still have to go on and still pay, like, for, like, the replacement fee. And it's kind of like you're also having to go on and, like, pay alimony to assist your replacement so weird so it seems we all of a sudden have this battle to the death and so everybody's kind of waiting and waiting for these two to show up and sarah is to show up and say like hey i'm the original sarah and like it seems that the other like the double sarah didn't show up so, now we go on, and I'm like, wait a minute. So, like, we don't even have the fight? We have the, what? All this buildup for jack crap nothing? And then, on top of that, Sarah is to go to this court, and everybody is to ask, like, well, is this, like, is this your Sarah, the Sarah you've been with for X amount of uh, time? Is this your... Uh, is this a Sarah that had come out of your womb, like Sarah's mom and like all these people? 
And I'm like, how about you just go on and like just poke the girl in the eye? <laughs> Shouldn't have anybody seen like if Sarah was to kind of put in contact lenses? Wouldn't that be a telltale sign? Um, but yeah, but we just have like the original Sarah who's just driving on after this court is to be gone and done with. And we never know anything else. And I'm sure there's never going to be a sequel that is to prove anything. But supposedly there was like these credits that were just showing this like forest and I was like, well, is there like an end credit scene to this movie? Is there some kind of like a uh, thing that I like that I didn't get to see here because I saw it through a bootleg version? And uh, so more than likely, maybe when this movie re comes out, uh, I'm going to go on and possibly see if there was some like end credit scene. Uh, but like for me, I was just like, wait a minute. Like, so like there was so much stuff that we built to. That went nowhere. Uh, we also had the one moment where Sarah and Double Sarah were going to this therapy session. This group therapy session of people who had gone on and been through this battle of death thing. And had either won or whichever. So we go on and we have these guys and I guess one of them had slept with his replacement. Like, I guess he like effed his like replacement. And so like at first they didn't go into that, but then all of a sudden Sarah's talking to devil Sarah. It's like, well, Hey, at least we're not bad as that one guy who effed his double. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, of course we just have like the bizarro uh, stories here. But, like, yeah, so, like, all these guys are writing, like, these letters to their double. And, like, they're they're mentioning how, like, uh, they're kind of grieving and, and stuff like that. And I'm like, you would probably have to just assess or assume that it's, like, why is it in like multiplicity did they like clone all the all the the michael keaton characters and they kept all the michael keaton characters but like in this movie it's like oh no like you can't have like the real sarah and a cloned sarah exist in this world oh no like uh and only dead people or only people who are gonna die can only keep their replacements i'm like you know what if you can have a cloned version of somebody like, I would just be, like, if you're a rich person, why not just kind of clone yourself? Like, you don't know, like, a bullet could come flying. Like, presidents should probably have, like, cloned versions of themselves, just in case. Like, eventually, to just kind of have their double go to, like, the lesser occasions. Or maybe there might be a threat of, like, hey, double, you're going to go in there and you're going to... Uh, do this press because it feels like there's uh there's gonna be a moment where uh there might be uh something at risk or you might be assassinated so you go in into there but yeah so like this movie is so wild uh but i think i'm gonna get out of here uh because more likely people may not care about this movie so at the end of the day uh i might be going on and uh doing this one for nothing but Anyways, uh, just a movie <laughs> to have seen. Uh, wouldn't recommend it, but at the end of the day, I could say that I've seen it, oddly enough. So, I'm going to get out of here. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody. There was one moment that I forgot about. There was one scene where both Trent and Sarah were going on and kind of playing the scenario out i guess for trent and like sarah for like this kind of makeshift battle where trent is to grab the gun and to start firing the gun and all of a sudden sarah is to go for this thing that it looks like this grenade which i'm like when is it all of a sudden there's a grenade? 
And so we had at some points that all of a sudden like swords are coming into play and like all these like random items that aren't even supposedly to be used here. And like none of this makes sense. Uh, and so we have this all being played out to where both Sarah and Trent are like play fighting and like mentioning how like they're they're hurt or like but like they didn't exactly die or they didn't get shot in a, a place where it actually like could kill them like there was no vital organs that got hit and so this like goofy like pretend scenario thing that is being played out was just kind of weird and funny um and so after they go on and they play all this out and Sarah is to beat Trent, Trent is to go on and tell Sarah, it's like, well, hey, you should have gone to the, for the gun first. Like, that should be the obvious thing. And Sarah's like, well, I know, but, like, I don't like guns. They're just so boring and they've been so overused. And this is coming from a woman that never goes on and watches, like, any, like, violent movies and stuff like that. And it seems that Trent was to push her into watching uh, certain horror films that weren't that good. <laughs> and so, yeah, like this, this, this fun, bizarre scenario uh, where at one point we go on and have them kind of play out what's going on with their bodies and that it's like like Sarah is like slicing into Trent. He's like, ah, it's like, you got me, but not enough to kill me. All right. <laughs> I'm going to go in and I'm going to go and, and, and stab into you like pretend. And yeah, <laughs> like just this kind of like real pretend fighting kind of thing where they're saying like how, ex how hurt they are. And like, I thought that that was like, so like, being back in the day of just like imagination and how you would go on and want to play these battles, but exactly say like what's going on. Um, so that way you can kind of build up to like a battle or death or something. And so like how you would go in, like when you're younger and you probably didn't really have much of any toys. So you just kind of, like, took rocks and sticks and, like, pretended to be certain characters or pretended to uh, eventually be uh, certain things. And, like, this is kind of, like, the same thing here. And just having these characters have a lot of fun with this film, um, I think is the main thing that we kind of, like, it comes across on screen that they're having fun. But, like, it's a, it's a very bizarre, goofy film. Um which I will say that I'm going to go out of my way to just get out of here. Uh, so I just wanted to mention that scene, even though it might have been like, might not have been all that uh, to have gone on and, and said. But anyways, I'm going to get out of here. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Let me know in the comments below if there's something that I forgot about, because I'm sure there probably is a million things that I did. So I'm going to get out of here. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody.